This car was so fast, it literally broke Formula One, a machine that could lap entire fields and set a wave of records across the 2020 season, many of which still stand five years later, and helped Lewis Hamilton tie Michael Schumacher's championship record. But here's the crazy part. After 2026, we'll never see anything like it again. This is the story of the Mercedes W11, the fastest car in F1 history, and why it represents the end of an era that'll make every motorsport fan nostalgic. It's 2020. You're watching F1, and Lewis Hamilton is so far ahead that the TV director literally stops showing him because it's boring. Cars are getting lapped in third place. Track records that stood for decades are falling every single weekend. It was automotive perfection on a level we'd never seen before. But for those who've been watching F1 for years, who remember the screaming V10s, the raw power of the V8 era, and the hybrid revolution, the W11 represents something heartbreaking. It's the last time we'll ever see pure, unfiltered engineering brilliance create a car this dominant. Because in 2026, new regulations will fundamentally change everything. And honestly, it's making old school F1 fans a little emotional. Let's put the Mercedes W11's dominance into perspective with numbers that'll blow your mind. This car won 13 out of 17 races in 2020. It secured 15 pole positions. It achieved 12 front row lockouts, meaning Mercedes drivers started first and second in 12 different races. They had five 1-2 finishes where Hamilton and Bottas literally finished ahead of everyone else. But here's the stat that shows you just how insane this car was. Across 17 races, Mercedes only lost two races due to car performance. The rest were either strategic errors, tire blowouts, or Hamilton getting COVID and missing a race. This car was so good, it made Formula One look easy. And the secret wasn't just one innovation, it was a perfect storm of engineering brilliance that we'll probably never see again. The W11 almost didn't happen. Its predecessor, the W10, was dominant but flawed. Picture Mercedes engineers in 2019, watching their car overheat at the Austrian Grand Prix, finishing third and fifth when they should have won. They lost 11 pole positions to Ferrari and Red Bull because they couldn't get their tyres working properly. The W10 had a narrow performance window. It was like having a supercar that only worked perfectly on Tuesdays between 2 and 4 p.m. For a team used to dominating, this was unacceptable. So Mercedes did what champions do. They went back to the drawing board and created something that would redefine what we thought was possible in motorsport. First up, the innovation that made every other team go, wait, that's legal. The DAS system, dual axis steering. The steering wheel was basically a cheat code built into the car. Here's how it worked. Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas could literally push and pull their steering wheel to change the toe angle of their front tires on long straights. Push the wheel forward to bring the front tires closer to parallel, cut drag, reduce tire scrub, and keep temperatures down. Approaching corners, pull the wheel back to increase toe out, give the front end more bite, and get better turn in and stability. But it wasn't just about speed, it was about tire management. By adjusting the toe angle, they could control how much heat their tires generated. Less heat meant more consistent performance over longer stints. It was a secret weapon that made their tires last longer while everyone else was struggling with degradation. Other teams were studying onboard footage like, what are they doing with their hands? It took months for people to figure out what was happening, and by the time they did, Mercedes had already dominated half the season. The best part, it was completely legal. For exactly one season, then the FIA banned it for 2021. But the damage was done. The DAS system was just the beginning. Mercedes completely revolutionized their suspension system, and it does get really technical, but it's pretty mind-blowing. They redesigned their front suspension geometry, changing how the wheels connected to the car. But it wasn't just for handling. They did it to unlock massive aerodynamic gains. By changing the suspension pickup points, they could direct airflow more efficiently around the front of the car. Then they moved to the rear, where technical director James Allison described their approach as adventurous. They completely rethought the wishbone shapes, the arms that connect the wheels to the chassis. It went far beyond handling. They were engineering aerodynamic breakthroughs that had never been seen before. While most teams were just trying to make their suspension behave, Mercedes was playing 4D chess, turning it into part of their aerodynamic weapon. They transformed mechanical parts into tools for managing airflow, generating more downforce and efficiency than anyone else on the grid. It wasn't flashy, but it was vital. Mercedes finally cracked their overheating issue. After the W10's temperature struggles, engineers completely reworked the cooling system and made the engine more efficient than ever. The payoff was huge. By running the engine hotter, Mercedes could shrink their cooling vents, slice away drag, and unlock more speed. 
one fix triggered a cascade of performance gains. Other teams needed huge cooling systems that ruined airflow. Mercedes didn't. Their car was slimmer, sharper, and far more efficient. Proof that perfect heat management means perfect aerodynamics. This allowed them to create what they called a narrow performance window, but in a good way. The car worked optimally across a much wider range of conditions because it wasn't constantly fighting overheating issues. What made the W11 truly special was how everything worked in sync. The DAS kept tire temperatures perfect, the suspension fed the aerodynamics, the thermal management made the whole package more efficient, every system amplified the next, a masterpiece of engineering harmony. And then there were the details that most fans never see. Mercedes used a Mercedes AMG F1M 11 EQ performance engine, a 1.6 litre V6 turbo hybrid producing over 1000 horsepower. They used an 8-speed semi-automatic sequential gearbox with one reverse gear, co-developed with X-Track. Every component was optimized for maximum performance. The car weighed exactly 746 kilograms, the minimum allowed. It used Pirelli tires, Petronas fuel, and lubricants, and a ZF carbon fiber clutch. These were components of a perfectly integrated system. The numbers from 2020 are absolutely bonkers, and they tell a story of dominance we may never see again. Lewis Hamilton won 11 races that season, securing his seventh world championship. Lewis Hamilton wins the Turkish Grand Prix and is a seven time champion of the world. And tying Michael Schumacher's all time record, Valtteri Bottas added two wins of his own. Even George Russell, who stepped in for one race when Hamilton got COVID, nearly won and set the fastest lap on debut. Mercedes didn't just win races, they owned Saturdays. The W11 scored 15 pole positions, 10 for Hamilton, 5 for Bottas, and 9 fastest laps across the season. They locked out the front row 12 times and delivered 5 1 2 finishes. With those results, Mercedes clinched their seventh consecutive constructors' championship, breaking Ferrari's long standing record. But it's the track records that really show how special this car was. At Silverstone, Hamilton set the fastest lap the track has ever seen a 1 minute 24.303 qualifying lap that still hasn't been beaten. At Spa Francorchamps, he qualified half a second ahead of Bottas, an eternity in modern F1. At the Hungarian Grand Prix, Mercedes was 0.8 seconds faster than the third place car. And here's the part most fans forget the W11 set outright lap records at nearly every circuit it raced on that season. Roughly 12 out of 14, a level of across the board speed the sport may never see again. And then there's the one that blew everyone's mind Hamilton's 2020 Italian Grand Prix pole lap. Averaging 164.3 miles per hour, 264.4 kilometers per hour, was the fastest lap in F1 history until Verstappen finally broke it five years later. Each victory felt like a declaration, proof that the W11 was redefining the limits of Formula One. For long-time F1 fans, this is where it hits a little harder. The W11 marks the closing chapter of a tradition that's defined the sport since the 1950s an era where engineers lived at the edge of what was possible, ground effect in the 70s, turbo fury in the 80s, active suspension in the 90s, hybrid genius in the 2010s. Each generation brought innovations that seemed impossible. Engineers would find loopholes, exploit gray areas, and create solutions that made you go, how did they even think of that? The W11 was the culmination of this philosophy. It was what happened when the best engineers in the world were given the resources and freedom to create something perfect. No compromises, no artificial limitations, just pure engineering excellence. But that era is ending. In 2026, new regulations will fundamentally change Formula One. We're keeping the same 1.6 litre VI6, but it'll produce less engine power and rely far more on electric boost, almost a 50-50 split. The MG UH is gone, the MG UK becomes vastly more powerful, and the cars themselves will be smaller, lighter, and built for closer racing. With active aerodynamics, sustainable fuels, and tighter rules across the board, the sport is shifting toward control and standardization. The racing might get closer, overtaking might get easier, the championship fights might be more competitive, but the era of raw, unrestrained engineering, the era that produced monsters like the W11, is ending. We're trading speed for spectacle, innovation for entertainment, dominance for parity. The new regulations are designed to make sure no team ever builds something this far ahead of the field again. For those who've been watching F1 for years, this hits differently. We remember when Ayrton Senna could find two seconds per lap through pure skill and car setup. 
We remember when Adrian knew he could design a car so good it made other teams question reality. We remember when innovation was the entire point of this sport. The W11 was the last car that could make you sit up and go, how is that even possible? It was the last time a team could build something so perfect and so dominant that it redefined what we thought was achievable in motorsport. And honestly, watching it dominate in 2020 was beautiful. Yes, it made some races boring and it reduced competition, but it was also a masterclass in engineering excellence that we'll never see again. The W11's legacy goes beyond just being fast. It secured Lewis Hamilton's place in history alongside Michael Schumacher. It gave Mercedes their seventh consecutive Constructors' Championship, breaking Ferrari's previous record. It set track records that are still standing today. But more than that, it represents what's possible when brilliant minds are given the freedom to innovate without artificial restrictions. It's a testament to human ingenuity, to the pursuit of perfection, and to the idea that there's always a way to go faster. In 50 years, when people talk about the greatest F1 cars ever built, the W11 will be mentioned alongside the Lotus 79, the McLaren MP4-4, the Ferrari F2004, and the Red Bull RB19. But it'll have a special place as the last of its kind. So here's my challenge to you. Go watch highlights of the 2020 season. Watch Hamilton at Silverstone setting that lap record that still stands today. Watch the W11 disappearing into the distance at Spa. Watch Bottas and Hamilton locking out the front row race after race. Watch George Russell nearly winning on his Mercedes debut. Watch history being made. Because after 2026, when F1 becomes more standardized, more controlled, more fair, you'll want to remember what peak performance actually looked like. You'll want to remember what it felt like to watch a car that was so good it seemed to break the laws of physics. The W11 wasn't just the fastest car in F1 history. It was the last great expression of unlimited innovation in motorsport. A beautiful, terrifying monster that we'll never see again. If this era means something to you too, like the video, share your take in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more F1 history and heartbreak.